Hello everybody, um, my name is Lauren and I'm kind of a plant uh, collector, amateur plant collector. I've been collecting for about, I'd say like a month now. And um, I have probably 15, 16 plants so far. That's not a lot compared to some. But um, I just wanted to go through and show you what I have. This is my oldest plant. It's a Monstera. Um, despite it being around three years old, um, it never really got fenestrations because I was a bad plant parent. Um, but it's got this lovely little leaf coming out. No fenestrations yet, but um, I actually propagated it um, from the mother plant. It was really in bad shape, so I just decided to start over with the mother plant. So I cut off a bunch of its little... Um, stems and petioles here with the leaves and propagated them in water and the first two propagations didn't work out. They rotted away in the soil because I had them in a really large pot that wasn't well draining and I was dumb. <laughs> so now I have it in a terracotta pot. It's smaller and the soil is better so it's a lot happier here. That leaf, I, I don't know what's going on with it but it's still alive. Um, I don't know if it'll produce any leaves that certain stock, but I have um, I have faith in it. <laughs> I'm pretty excited for this little leaf to come in. And um, this is my second oldest plant that I did the same thing with. Um, it was a, I think it's a burgundy rubber tree or it's a green form. I can't really tell right now. <laughs> um, but I, it's my second oldest plant. I bought, I bought it about three or four years ago, and it got root rot and died because I did the same thing that I did with this plant. I stuck the entire tree in a very large pot, and um, I put it outside, and it got sunburnt a little bit, <laughs> and then I brought it back in, and it rotted away. So I decided to take some cuttings from it. The roots developed really well. And I stuck it in some soil recently, so we'll see how it goes. I don't know why this leaf is so like curled up, but it's growing roots, um, so we'll see what it does. This is my Marble Queen Pothos. It's really pretty. It's gotten so much bigger since I bought it. Uh, I'll probably start propagating and putting some... Um, little stems here to fill some stuff in, but I repotted it recently. It seems pretty happy. Um, those brown tips are from the water that it was being fed before me. So, I mean, it looks it looks really good. Otherwise, it's starting to trail out quite a bit. And my boyfriend and I named it Honk. <laughs> I don't know why. This is my lovely Hoya. It's a crimson queen, I think. Um, it's a really nice plant. I really like this plant. It's grown um, quite a bit for me, actually. It put out this leaf and then those two leaves back there, and it's working on, I'll show you. It's working on this closest leaf here. Um, it's not very big yet, but I love the variegation on it. And I repotted this one recently as well. I was pretty silly, and I repotted it in the wrong soil at first, and thankfully I noticed the day of. So I went and I got some orchid bark, and I mixed it with, I did like a 70% orchid bark, and a 20% or 30% um, regular potting mixture, and it, uh, it should be fine. I, it's an epiphyte, so it grows on trees and such. So that's why a chunky mixture is ideal with these guys. They can survive, I've heard, in like regular potting soil. That's very like aerated, but um, this type of soil is ideal, I've heard. This guy is my only pepperonia. <laughs> and he's, he's kind of silly looking right now. Um, I got him from a nursery that wasn't ideal. Um, and all of their plants there were kind of 
sad, <laughs> sad looking and um, pretty brown and crispy. So I, I was like, okay, well, this is pretty much the healthiest plant that I could find there. Um, and he's, he's doing okay. Um, I don't know why he's leaning like that. I, I think maybe that's just how he grew or how they potted him. But I might repot him at some point and fix that. He's got these cute little blooms here. Some of them came off when I bought him. But he's pretty cool. This is a um, Peperonia Rosso. So I kind of have him like this to train him towards the window. This plant is a little baby um, Ficus Altissima. And he put out one of these leaves here. I think this one? Sorry. <laughs> I think you put out this one or this one. Um, so he's been putting out some nice leaves and he's got new growth here so hopefully he'll put out a new leaf again. Um, the way they cut him or the way they grew him is kind of strange. Um, he's kind of coming out of like this stem here that they propagated and I'm assuming they made like little notches and he just grew like that. So he's not growing straight. I'll probably try and fix that somehow, but that's how he's going. <laughs> and then this is one of my rarer plants. Um, he is a Hoya Compacta or a Hindu rope variegated. And he is, I bought him at the same time as this guy, the regular. Carnosa, and he's a really slow goer. Um, I, I really like him. <laughs> I mean, he's he's really pretty, but um, he doesn't do much. <laughs> he does have new growth, if I can turn him this way. He does have new growth under there somewhere. You can kind of see it. That little yellow bit there. Um... So hopefully that grows pretty swiftly. Um, it's probably due for fertilize. Um, but it's starting to get to fall in like winter-ish. So I'm probably going to slow down with that. And overall, I really like him. He's, he's a good little plant. And I love that you can really tell if they need water. This particular part here gets kind of crinkly. So that's how I can tell he needs water. This plant back here is, of course, the String of Hearts. I got her about a month ago, and she's grown quite a bit. I don't want to disturb her, but um, she's she's doing well. I kind of just leave her here, and she just takes off, and no problems at all. And she's a beautiful plant. I cut off that little bit right here um, to propagate, and then I messed up, so... <laughs> um, no longer propagating that bit. So you win some, you lose some. This is by far my favorite plant. I am in love with Scandapsis, any types of Scandapsis, Trubii, Moonlight, Dark Form, um, Silvery Ann, Exotica, which is this one. Um, any, any type of Scandapsis. I just love Scandapsis. I love the, like, coloration on them. I love the feel of their leaves. They're very like succulent. And I love the way they grow, especially this one because she has a bunch of very silverly silvery leaves. This is some sort of hole that was on it when it was shipped. Um, she's pr they're just beautiful. Like These are beautiful silvery leaves and this one here is almost completely silver no need to get no need to get a true eye moonlight with this plant <laughs> so um i just really love it it's it's a very communicated plant these get like kind of soft and flimsy once you need water so 10 out of 10 i have another skindapsis over there that is um I think it's the Silvery Anne. It's the smaller version, not the Exotica. But overall, great plant. I also repotted it recently as well. And it's it's taking off. It's got this little leaf coming in that I'm super excited about. 
and that bit over there is growing quite a bit so it's a lovely little plant. I also really love this plant. Sorry. <laughs> this plant is an asparagus fern and they call it that because the new growth when it comes in looks like little asparagus shoots and they come out of these um, I don't know if you can see. See that little white dot there? They come out of those little white dots and they look like little asparagus shoots. Um, but it's actually not a fern. Um, I've heard it's part of the lily family and they're pretty easy to take care of. It took me a while to figure out how to take care of it, but once you know, <laughs> they're pretty easy and they're forgiving. So basically what you do is you can't let this dry out completely. I probably let the first top two inches dry out and then I water it and I also missed it because I've heard that it likes that. <laughs> so that's that row. Um, and then this is the propagation row and the small plants row. Um, there's nothing propagating anymore. Isn't that crazy? Because Everything that I have been propagating is now in soil, basically, including the scandapsis. Um, pretty sad story about that, actually. I had, a, like, my first real houseplant that I bought um, once I started getting into them was the scandapsis exotica. And I bought it from Lowe's, and it didn't have a drainage hole, per usual, and <laughs> it was a hanging plant. And I stuck it in kind of a dark corner. I hung it in kind of like this really dark corner up there. And it slowly deteriorated. Got really bad root rot. Um, and I eventually I tried to save it. I eventually just decided I'm going I'm to propagate all these leaves. So that's what I'm doing now. They look really sad. <laughs> they look really bent and sad and floppy. But... Um, They've got roots, they're just adjusting, and they're going to take their time to kind of unfold and look normal again. <laughs> but, yeah. So, that's my sad some sad skindapsis that I'm trying to give another life. Um, this is one of my favorite plants in the entire world, obviously. Um, it's a variegated string of hearts. Serapegia woodii. And these are actually two different um, plants that I bought from two different people. Um, the one here in the top, with the bigger leaves, that one is from, I think, Sucky Life. And I originally had it in moss over there, and then I was like, eh, not really digging the moss. So I, I put it in soil, and it's, it's doing fine. It's growing leaves and hopefully it will grow some roots soon. I can't really tell, <laughs> um, but I'm not really concerned about it because these are so easy to propagate. And then this other one here with the more variegation, more pink on it, um, this one's from, I think, Succulent Creations on Etsy as well, and it's got a little new thing on it, and this one is rooted, so I'm not concerned about it. I just watered these guys because they were really dry. But um, yeah, I'm really excited for these. They grow so quickly, so beautifully, and they get a lot of sun in this spot. So I'm not worried about the variegation. And this guy is probably due for a water pretty soon here, but he is a variegated uh, string of pearls. Yeah, he's due for water, I would say. It's pretty light. But he, um, I forgot where I got him from, but I also got him on Etsy. And he's he's quite pretty. I really enjoy him. He just kind of sits, and he's got new growth, as you can see. And he just kind of sits there and, and does nothing and <laughs> looks pretty. Um, I'm not worried about him, really. He's, I know a lot of people have troubles with these guys, but um, I... I kind of watched some videos on how to tell if they need water, and I'm not particularly concerned. I I think I'm pretty good with watering. I'm not a very heavy hand, but we will see in time. 
<laughs> um, but yeah, that's that little empty container with sphagnum moss. Um, not really sure what to do with that. And here's my nose plant. Or, uh, yeah, this is my nose plant. This is obviously a little prayer plant. She's very beautiful, very cute, very soft. I love her very much. She's so adorable. She's got a lot of new growth coming in there and there, some over there somewhere. And, uh, oh yeah, right there. She's, she's lovely. Um, tells me exactly what she wants. She's just a nice, a nice person, a nice plant. Um, got a little bit of like yellowing, um, coming from the nursery that I got her from, but overall she looks super healthy. Um, but yeah, that is basically my plant collection. I have a couple downstairs that are in quarantine because I found like one or two mealybugs on them and I freaked out. Oh, I forgot. This is my huge Anglionema Silver Bay. Um, I actually split it up from the original plant and it, uh, I mean, it looks kind of sad because I think it's still adjusting, but it's got some new growth and it's, it's doing all right, I, I think. <laughs> and it's got this really cool variegated leaf on here. I've never seen a variegation on this particular type of Anglionema, so I'm pretty proud of that. Um, the leaves are nice. The stems could look better. <laughs> I should probably tie it up a bit so that it's more um, upright, but it seems to be doing fine. It's been here for about a week and it doesn't look too bad. So, um, any advice on an anglonema, I would not mind. I split them up and I put them in some soil. There were probably 15 different plants in the, in the original plant. Um, the two downstairs are doing a lot better than this one, but he was kind of difficult to plant, so there's my humidifier going, but yeah, that is pretty much it. I have a silver sword coming in, and I'll do an unboxing video for that, so anyway, thank you for watching, and have a great day.